Hey guys, welcome. In this video, I'm going to be discussing my impressions and thoughts about the Splatoon 3 world premiere Splatfest. So over the weekend, um, I had the opportunity to play the Splatfest for quite a bit, for five hours actually. I got to the rank of Paper Ruler, that's right, Team Paper for the win, Paper Mario, uh, that, you know, the inspiration for that. Um, and it was crazy how long it took me, five hours to get to Paper Ruler, and then I saw some people with Paper Ruler plus seven. So I don't have that much experience with Splatoon 3, but I did play enough to get to Paper Ruler, and I did uh, mostly turf uh, battles. Uh, turf war battles, but the last hour, last hour I played was tricolor turf battles, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But first, I want to talk a little bit about um, how it feels in general. Splatoon 3, I feel like the coloring and the ink, I just love how like smooth and polished it all is. It's really cool to see. Um, how do I describe it? It's just, it looks really even more polished than it was in Splatoon 2, which is nice. I think, in general, it plays quite similar to Splatoon 2. In fact, it just kind of felt like I was playing Splatoon 2, which isn't a bad thing, because I love that game. And I don't even want any negative connotation with, like, oh, it's too much, because I, th it's too much like Splatoon 2, because it really did feel like, um... Because I believe, personally, that Splatoon 3 is worth it, and I'm super excited for the new game, and I think it's coming out a perfect time. Um, but... It did feel like Splatoon 2, which is okay, it just felt like I was playing an improved version, which was awesome. It was awesome to see all the new matchmaking things like that. While you're while you're in a match, you can actually be, you know, hanging out in the practice area, shooting targets, practicing your aim, trying out different, wep different weapons. Well, not when you're actively queuing, but it's really awesome to have those two integrated in one. I never used the practice range in Splatoon 2 because I wouldn't want to go out of my way to the shop and then to the practice range. I'd just rather go and play, but now I can actually use that feature which is fantastic um, and that is really cool after about four hours I started to get bored in the training room running around but that's after four hours of a Splatfest I've been playing a lot that day so makes sense that like it's not supposed to keep you entertained forever and it's it's gonna stay pretty much the same throughout Splatoon 3 so that makes sense but it's really cool and I'm glad the ghost thing is really fun I enjoy seeing other people like um, I was doing it with a friend it was cool to see him running around where he was at it's kind of sad you don't share ink when you're shooting around that's slightly disappointing but that's okay um, and it's kind of weird how every once in a while all the ghosts will disappear and then they'll reappear and it seems like it's on, it doesn't seem like connection things because it's pretty consistent how it'll go for like 30 seconds and then stop and then come back 30 seconds later. I don't know why they did that. Maybe to just leave you focused on training. It's not a bad thing. It's just a thing I noticed. Um, now I guess we'll talk a little bit about the weapons. The Splatana is really cool and I felt like I could understand how it worked. It was kind of like a shooter. If you didn't want to learn how to the, do the melee stuff, and that was that made sense to me. I could just shoot straight forward with the little arcs, and I I wasn't really good at the melee blasting. I may need to practice that, but it was a weapon that I feel like you could that you would need to practice with to get good at the melee blasting and using its mechanics. And the same thing for the tri stringer. This tri stringer seems really hard to kill people with, like insanely hard. Like even if like if you get a perfect shot on, you kill them, and if not, otherwise you don't and it doesn't seem to do a whole lot of damage otherwise. But I really like the theming of the weapon and how it's a bow and kind of the like Katniss Everdeen vibes you get from the main inkling in the promotional art from the bow. And I really like that, kind of like a Katniss Everdeen against Chaos. It seems pretty cool. The weapon is awesome. And mechanically, I saw the the um, the Nintendo Treehouse Live where they were showing off like the Octo Expansion type level where you had to use the Tri-Stringer to pop all the balloons. And that looked incredible, but as a weapon I'd want to main or use, it seems really difficult for me right now, so hopefully I get a lot of practice in the story mode. Um, talking about the Turf War battles, they've been the same as they've always been in Splatoon 2, but um, it was cool to try out all the new weapons and things, but it was a good time. I really liked how at the end of the match it would kind of tell you, oh, you're number one in this, number one in this. And honestly, you can kind of tell when it's just really grasping at straws for things to tell you. Like, number one killer whale user, or number one person to walk. I don't know. And then you can tell when you've, like, number one splatter, number one inker. You can tell when you've actually contributed or not. But it's kind of nice to, like, just have things to read. I don't know, it's just kind of interactive and fun, and I really liked that. I also liked how 
many options there are in even in the demo there were like you could look at all of the different matches you've done like a whole bunch of them you could look at all the stats how many people you killed how many people got you how many times you tried to get the ultra signal in the tricolor turf war you could look at all of that who you played with and it was incredible how many things you could look at it was just so much better than splatoon 2 where you had to go to the app to see all that information and so that was really awesome finally talking about tricolor turf wars i think this is my maybe an unpopular opinion i think it is a wonderful mode and I think it's super fun and a lot of people were complaining about balance one way or the other the interesting thing was a lot of people would say that it was balanced in favor of the defense oh, okay maybe not a lot. a lot of people thought it was balanced in favor of the attacking teams and then there was one or two people that said it was balanced in favor of the defending teams and that they could just never get in and so I think really it is less a matter of balance right now maybe it is an unbalanced mode and we'll figure that out but I think right now it's more that people are still learning how to use the mode and as people become educated on how to play it and what you're supposed to be doing like when the defending team knows oh we're supposed to be defending when the attacking team knows oh we need to be getting the ultra signal I feel like once everybody learns that and we have a few more Splatfests with it we'll start to really find out if it is balanced or not because I think it is ultimately probably people not knowing how to play the mode right now I still don't even know they <laughs> I feel like they didn't explain it as well as they could have because I still don't know if you want to be splatting the other team while they're getting the ultra signal. I was on team paper, so we were attacking, team rock was on the other side, and I thought, you know, to win, that we needed, us, just paper needed to have the most ink. And later I found out, oh, you still get a victory if team rock wins. So I was wondering, do we both get the same amount of clout in that case? Do we get more clout if we're the ones who win as opposed to team rock? So, and those questions make a huge difference in how you play because otherwise, if I know just one of us two has to win and we get the same rewards either way, then no longer am I trying to ink over blue, no longer am I trying to splat Team Rock, whereas I actually killed one or two Team Rock players trying to get the Ultra Signal because I was like, oh, I don't want them to get it, I want me to get it, not them, although we're working together. So if anybody knows the answer to that, well, it would be great, but I feel like they could have explained that better so you know, okay, even though I can splat them, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should be trying to just cover red and I see, oh, I can't win now, so my goal should be to help blue win instead by just covering red. So I think that's a really interesting component that they should hopefully touch on. But going back to the balance, I think we'll be able to know better if it's balanced as everybody's more accustomed to how the mode works. Uh, I think it could be in favor of the attacking team just because they have three whole minutes to get their objective. And if they get it any time during the three minutes, they win. Otherwise as opposed to the defending team having to succeed the entire three minutes and and then they have a pretty good shot at winning so it could be unbalanced but i think overall i think it's a really fun mode and i enjoyed it a lot it was fun to have a more objective based mode in tur in a splat fest because like after you play turf war for three hours you're like oh yeah it's fun inking the ground but then you kind of you kind of get bored so it's nice halfway through to be like oh hey new mode you know wake up this is your new goal and that was fantastic to be like thinking, oh, I need to be inking, but I also be trying for the ultra signal. And it was like a really nice, I feel like a step in teaching newer players who maybe just come for this Splatfest, like, okay, and this is how an objective works, how you have to balance multiple things, inking and trying to get an ultra signal. Or in the case of, you know, the defending team, you gotta be inking into the opposing team's area, but you also need to be making sure you're not going too far away and not letting people slip through who are getting the ultra signal. And I think that's really fun to have at the second half of the Splatfest to really change it up and then have a more difficult and engaging mode, mentally speaking. Overall impressions, I'm really excited for Splatoon 3. I played for five hours on Saturday and I still want to play. It was an awesome mode. Um, team Paper for the win. And I'm, I'm happy with the Tricolor Turf Wars. I'm happy with the new three, pick three teams. The weapons are cool. I just, I had really good impressions. The... I don't even know if I have anything negative to say. I just really liked it. It was an awesome time. I'm hoping that the next Splatfest I'll be able to stream, uh, or sorry, I'll be able to make videos of. I actually did make videos of this Splatfest, but I lost the audio, so I had to do this instead. But yeah, it was an awesome time, and I'm really glad it happened. I think it's going to bring in lots of people to buy the third game, because it was a really fun time. I think everybody who jumped on just had a blast. Um, in the first half or second half, um, and sometimes you lose, but that's just part of Splatoon, and I think in the Splatfest, everybody got a nice, you know, even distribution of wins and losses that nobody, you know, went away super sad. 
So anyways, those are my impressions. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be sure to when Splatoon 3 comes out, we're going to be making lots of videos on that. And right now we're making Splatoon 2 videos. So be sure to stick around and watch any of those if you want to. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.